So prior to AI2, uh, quite a bit because you were also at Hugging Face, uh, but uh, prior to that, you were at UC Berkeley and you focused on the intersection of robotics and machine learning, which for me is personally super fascinating right now. So there have been some really exciting developments in that space recently, things like NVIDIA's Project Root for humanoid robots using generative AI and reinforcement learning. Um, and there's also the announcement of an MIT spin-off Liquid AI, which plans to revolutionize robotics with liquid neural networks. No oh, one I even know they're a robotics company. I saw yeah. them, but I didn't know. <laughs> but so yeah, so what's exciting for you at this intersection of LLMs and robotics? What's promising there for us? Yeah, I think the place this, all of this really started was Google Brain's research team on robotics. They're still doing great things, but they were years ahead to embrace this, which is like, let's scale up our data engine. Let's train some big models. And then it kind of just worked. I, that'll clearly continue. And on more and more complex tasks, as people invest resources in this data, there's kind of a product market fit issue, which is like, I don't want to buy a robot. So like most of the really nuanced takes come on this product sign. I'm pretty confident that the research is going to keep going places. I think there th this is the kind of the two biggest trends in robotics and machine learning in the last few years in my mind. One of them is this kind of scaling up data collection using some sort of large model. You can get real world results that work. Google showed this. Other places have replicated it. They did this like open data set project. But there's also like deep RLs like actual success area has narrowed and narrowed down to this kind of like simulation for robotics where you have like procedurally generated worlds and you simulate for robotics. I feel like I I want to I should try to do another survey on this, but I wrote a blog post like a year ago that was just listing a whole bunch of places where that has worked. It's like drone flight, locomotion, other things like the like deep mind had the nuclear fusion paper. And it's like <laughs> there's all of these really wild things that are really narrow scoped deep RL is helping with. So I think that's what most robotics companies will be leveraging is like we have our robot farm internally that can collect data and then that's the question of how do you integrate like consumer data or if you're trying to like humanoids are hard because at a mechanical level the most of the humanoid robots have such high force that it's hard to have them around humans i think this is what what was maybe like used to be like wherever eric jang works like 10x robotics or 1x robotics they're trying to make actuators that are lower force, so it's safer to have them around humans. I think, like famously, the Boston Dynamics robot, like you can't have humans around it because if its arm is doing a motion and it hits you, you go flying across the room because there's so much force. It's like that's not safe. So then there's this kind of weird last mile consideration, and then, but the I, I which had me really down on it, and then I was talking to the family friend, and he's like. But teller operation can save you. So it's like if you want to have humans in your house and or like robots in your house of any type, it's obvious that they're not going to work for many things. But you could outsource the labor to like India. and There will be people that will happily like empty your dishwasher manually instead of the robot failing to do it automatically, which like creates a whole like a redistribution of labor market, which like arbitrages costs and stuff, which I actually think would probably work if people got over the privacy concerns. So I kind, of, I kind of skipped something in the middle, which is like having robots in your house is probably not going to work for a really long time because of the distribution shift. But I think most people there are serious about that. And then it's like if the distribution shift is such a big problem, that's when you do the teller operation. I respect a lot of people that are joining this field right now because there's a lot of opportunity to grab in the language model space in terms of digital applications and building services. It's like the, it's like the people that are still doing their fundamental research or the people that go to robotics. It's like, Y'all are taking the long-term thing. I think Eric Jang specifically was like, yeah, this is like a 10 to 20 year bet for humanoid robotics. And I was like, respect for like taking the big risk because it, it, it does seem to be going in the right direction. And robotics has been, if you take away like the stable diffusion moment and the chat GPT moment, like the robotics trend line is just like the same. It's just like slowly, slowly going up and we're pulling in new things. So it doesn't have as much of a... Splash factor. The splash is from people like Elon marketing it now. Yeah, like, yeah. like Tesla Optimus is probably going to be similar to autopilot. It's like I don't really think of it as exactly <laughs> what it's marketed as, but they have a really good team there, and they're building a cool robot. And then the, the, that mismatch will be managed in some downstream way. Nice, gotcha. So basically, you think that it's going to be some time before we have humanoid robots in our homes doing a lot of regular tasks. So where we're going to see more and more robotics applications are in industry typically. 
Yeah. So like there's three really popular Bay Area like robotics and AI startups, which are like Dexterity, Ambi, and Covariant. And all of them have contracts with companies for various logistics tasks, like pick and place or unloading a truck or loading a pallet. And they all work really well on this. Amazon does this, like Amazon is setting up their fulfillment centers to be robot first. They build entire um, fulfillment centers from the ground up to be ready for robots then, rather than being ready for humans, rather than subbing robots in for where there were humans. So all of this really works. It's like, how do you get them to leave the like manufacturing line type of thing, which is just so, so different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so related potentially because of how we're now seeing LLMs more frequently in robotics applications, like the Groot explanation from earlier, and you just mentioned Covariant, they had a really cool one too, their um, Robotic Foundation Model 1, RFM1. Like that stuff is the way to get to human interaction. Like having language with your robot is the way, it's just going to take a lot of reliability for somebody to want to buy it. Yeah, it, I, it, it seems so logical. 